is going on guys? Today I want to share with you my top 10 places in Arizona. Some of these are going to be hikes, some of these are going to be national and state parks, some of them are just going to be awesome hidden gems to visit. It's an incredible state, it's great for people who love adventure and love exploring. There is so much to do in Arizona, so in this video I want to share with you guys my favorite places over road trips I've done over the last few years. And just really quick, if you could, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and allows me to continue making videos like this, and I've got a ton of other videos on Arizona with more detail on very specific hikes and places so check those out but right now let's hop into my top 10 places to visit in Arizona First up is going to be Antelope Canyon. So in this, I'm gonna be referring strictly to Upper Antelope Canyon. If you've ever heard of Lower Antelope Canyon, that's the famous place that you need a highly coveted permit to go to and has been closed during the pandemic. Upper Antelope Canyon is a way to see the same beautiful canyon, actually super easy and way more of an adventurous outing. To get here, you will need to rent a kayak, stand-up paddleboard, or jet ski in Page, Arizona. We rented from Lake Powell Paddleboards and Kayaks. They also included a delivery to the boat launch, which was great. And super helpful because we were not able to fit a kayak in our car. Then you head out to Antelope Point Marina, which is just 15 minutes from Page, and then you have two options. First, you can do a day trip where you kayak straight to Antelope Canyon, or you can do what we did, which was a backpacking trip on Antelope Island. So pretty much we set off and then dropped our camping gear at Antelope Island, and then we set off for Antelope Canyon itself. When we crossed the water and kayaked to it, it was such a beautiful day on the water. And then you reach a point where the water ends, and this is where you dock your kayak and then set out on foot. You can hike as far as you'd like I think we did roughly three to four miles before kayaking back to Antelope Island if you would like more detailed information on this specific excursion check out my girlfriend Bree's blog I'll link it in the description and we also have a YouTube video on it on the channel so check that out as well Next up is going to be Monument Valley, and this is actually on the border of Utah and Arizona, but the Navajo National Tribal Park and Visitor Center is on the Arizona side. Currently, as of August 12, 2021, the Navajo Nation is in an orange phase, so you'll need masks to visit both inside and outdoors. This is something that can change though, so check before you go. Monument Valley is one of the most special places I've been in the Southwest, and of course, it's not a visit here with stopping at Forest Gump Road, as seen in the famous movie. As for visiting, there's a 17-mile loop road to drive. There's tons of places to pull off to take photos. The entire park is extremely photogenic. The park is open from 8 to 5 and during the winter the loop drive is open from 8 to 2. Number three is going to be the Grand Canyon. This is one of the most special places in the entire world. It's no wonder why millions of people travel here every single year, even throughout the pandemic. There were three million visitors last year. The Grand Canyon has an unfathomable amount of layered bands of red rock that showcase millions of years of geological history. Over millions of years, water carved out the canyon through water's tremendous erosive power. While the Colorado River flows through seven states, the Grand Canyon is mostly just home to Arizona. There are a ton of roadside pull-offs to enjoy the Grand Canyon and a lot of viewpoints, but if you're looking for something a little bit more intense and adventurous, you can check out Bright Angel Trail, which will take you all the way to a white sand beach at the bottom of the canyon. It's almost a 20 mile day, but man, what an experience it is to go all the way to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Number four is going to be Fossil Springs, and this is an absolute oasis in Strawberry, Arizona. This hike includes a stunning waterfall and some pristine, deep aqua blue caves that make you feel like you're in the Philippines. This place blew me away. We hung out all day, and I wish I could have spent more time here. You can get to Fossil Springs from Bob Bear Trail, which is what we did, and we needed a permit from recreation.gov. This hike is 8.3 miles round trip with 1,505 feet of elevation gain, and you actually hike down to Fossil Springs, and then you hike all of the elevation gain 
on the way back to the car, which is a little bit different for most hikes, so you have to save some energy for the way back. Another option to get to Fossil Springs is to hike the Fossil Creek Falls Trail, which is 2.6 miles and 249 feet of elevation gain round trip. Can't recommend this place enough for someone visiting Arizona. Next up is going to be Lone Rock, Arizona, and this will include Lone Rock itself, Lone Rock Beach, and Lone Rock Campground. This is a van lifers or overlanders dream place. When we camped here in our van, we were alongside hundreds of other RVs, vans, and a bunch of other rigs. It was like one big outdoors community coming together to enjoy this beautiful landscape. Lone Rock is on Lake Powell, and it's definitely one of the easiest ways to enjoy Lake Powell and to see it. The beach is a great place to get out on the water or just enjoy laying out for the day. Number six is going to be Sedona, and honestly I don't even really know where to begin with Sedona. Sedona is an Arizona desert town near Flagstaff that is surrounded by red rock buttes, steep canyon walls, natural rock features and caves, and it has a vibrant art community with spas, art galleries, and new age shops. Honestly, I hope I get to visit Sedona many more times in my life. Every time I've been, it's been such a fun experience. Some of my favorite trails here include Sedona Caves, Cathedral Rock, Devil's Bridge, Birthing Cave, and much, much more. I actually have a dedicated vlog to adventures in Sedona and a top 10 hikes in Sedona, so if you'd like to check those out, they are on my channel and I can link them below. Number seven is going to be Slide Rock State Park, and this is a state park in Oak Creek Canyon, and it's actually just seven miles north of Sedona. The drive here from Flagstaff or Sedona itself is beautiful and an amazing activity in itself. Slide Rock is known for its natural rock water slides formed by the slippery rocks of Oak Creek. This is a great swimming hole for families, a chill day with friends, or just an awesome activity to do in the area. The entry fee is between $20 and $30 in the summer months and $10 in the winter months, while pedestrians and bikers are just charged $5. Number eight is going to be Watson Lake, and this is one of two reservoirs at the Granite Dwells in Prescott, Arizona. While you can't swim in the water due to pollution, this is still an incredible place for adventure and it is wildly scenic all around. The granite cliffs surrounding Watson Lake is a great place for rock climbing, bouldering, and just running around on some of the mellower rocks. 
The rocks are so smooth and beautiful and there are many rock islands inside the lake which also makes it a great place for photography. We camped here and it was an amazing day and evening. I definitely recommend camping here as it is an amazing hidden gem in central Arizona. Number nine is going to be Petrified Forest, and this is a national park in northeastern Arizona. It is filled with colorful petrified wood and crazy rock formations throughout, including one of its most famous trails, Blue Mesa. This is a perfect half-day trip as you can drive through the entire national park in just a few hours with stops, and most of the hiking trails, if you do any, are relatively short and easy. But you can also see most of the park from the various parking lots, making it extremely accessible to everybody. If you're driving from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Flagstaff, you will drive right through the park. So so it is a must stop. And just a note, we tried to come here to photograph sunrise, but the park gates were closed. So double check hours before you go, because when we went, it was only open from eight to five. Last but not least is going to be Horseshoe Bend, and this is just eight minutes south of Page, Arizona, and it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. Horseshoe Bend is on Lake Powell, and it's genuinely hard to describe the scale of this place. Photos and videos just don't do it justice or even begin to show the size of this landscape. This place is getting pretty commercial, so you do need to pay an entrance fee now. It's $5 for motorcycles and $10 for passenger vehicles at the visitor center. The trail from the parking lot is 1.5 miles round trip with 137 feet of elevation gain. It's a very nice and easy walk. Then you can explore Horseshoe Bend by walking around the edges and getting different perspectives of the area. Horseshoe Bend is my favorite place in Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, famed for its horseshoe-shaped rock formation on the Colorado River. So that is going to be it for this video guys of my top 10 places to visit in Arizona. I have videos dedicated to most of these on my channel so check them out if you would like and if you would like more detailed information on each and more specific trail specs for hiking. Otherwise again please like and subscribe if you are not already subscribed to the channel and I really appreciate it and I hope to see you on a future video. Thank you for watching.